Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at a set of very famous subsets, specifically the subsets of real numbers. And before we get into this, we do have some definitions we need to go over. First of all, what is a subset? So a subset can be a little bit weird to explain. I'm going to try to write it down as best I can. But a subset, um, so I'm going to use the word set a lot. I apologize in advance. A subset, so we're going to say B is a subset of A if every element in B if every element in B is also an element of A. So for example one subset could be if I did the days of the week. So what if A represented the days of the week? I'm only just going to use the, the first letter of each one. So that would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're going to pretend like I wrote those out. I'm just lazy. Um, set B, a subset of set A, would be any combination of days of the week. So maybe I just want to look at the weekdays. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. This would be a subset because every element in here can also be found in set A. So that's what we're referring to when we're for referring to a subset of some other set of numbers. Now the next question is, what is the real number system? The real number system is all the numbers or any of the numbers that could be represented on a number line. So if you can draw a number line and you can approximate or find exactly where that number should be, then that is a real number. If something is not a real number, it's called uh, an imaginary number, which we're not really going to get into because right now we're just focusing on our real number system. Okay, so we're going to look at the subsets of real numbers. So remember, real numbers, anything that can be represented on a number line. The most restrictive is called either the counting numbers or the natural numbers. And these subsets of real numbers get really fancy notation. Usually when we represent a set, we use a single capital letter. But you'll see here we have a very fancy N, and that's representing the set of natural numbers. So you don't have to list them because you can just write fancy N, and that will do the work for you. To draw this N, what I usually do is I do like a almost an upside down V, and then a right side up V. And that, you know, it's almost identical to what PowerPoint did for me. Anyway, the set of natural numbers starts with the number 1, and it increases by 1s, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. The reason I started with the counting numbers is because my guess is that these were the very first numbers that were ever invented or used uh, going way, way, way back. The next set of numbers would be the whole numbers. Now you'll notice that W is not fancy and that's because the whole numbers, unfortunately, they don't get a fancy set name. So I just called it uppercase W, but that's not universally accepted. So just be careful with that. It's not a fancy W, that's a normal W. The set of whole numbers is the set of counting numbers with the addition of zero. So that's the only difference. We just include zero in the whole numbers. The next set would be the set of integers. For integers, we use the, the fancy Z. And so for the Z, I do like this, like almost like a 7 and then an L. And that, that gets pretty close. And integers, those are whole numbers plus their opposites, their additive opposites. So we have 0, we have the counting numbers, and then we have the opposite of the counting numbers, negative 1, negative 2. This is the first set, you'll notice, that doesn't have a first term. So the whole numbers, the first term was 0, the counting numbers, the first term was 1. This one does not have a first term. Okay, getting a little more wiggle room here. We have the rational numbers represented by Q. Now, the computer made me do a very fancy Q. Generally, when we write out our rational numbers, we just do 1 little loopy do and that's good enough. Um, and these are a little bit weirder to explain, but basically a number is a rational number if that number could be expressed as a fraction p over q, where p and q are integers and q does not equal zero. So basically rational numbers are integers plus decimals and fractions. And by decimals I mean decimals that either repeat or terminate. So 0 0.737373, that would be a rational number. If it was 0 0.737333, 7333, 7333, 3, that would not be a rational number. 
So if we have, if you can use the bar, right? You might be familiar with putting a bar over the part of the decimal that repeats. If you can use the bar, that's a rational number. If the decimal stops, that's a rational number. If it's a fraction of integer over integer, 17 over 21, that's a rational number. And uh, okay, we'll, we'll freeze there. Okay, then we have the set of irrational numbers. Again, they don't get a special name, um, but it's just numbers that are real numbers that are not rational. So pretty um, circular definition there. And then real numbers, the R. So the R, again, this is a little fancier than what we usually do. We usually just do a double edge. And it would look like that. These are numbers that can be graphed on the number line. And basically the way that this is created is that every set that's listed is a subset of all of the sets beneath it until we get to the irrationals. So natural numbers are a subset of whole numbers, which are a subset of integers, which are a subset of rational numbers, and then the rational numbers and the real uh, irrational numbers are both subsets of real numbers. To see this again in a beautiful diagram, we start out with the real numbers, that's R, that's really fancy R, we would just usually use this. Real numbers can be classified into two things. They could either be irrational. So irrational numbers, you might be familiar with those because those are numbers that you, we can't write as normal numbers. We might write pi, a Greek letter. We might have to keep a square root in there. The square root of three is an irrational number. Um, if it's rational, then we don't have to worry about using Greek letters or square roots or anything of that nature. And rational numbers are defined by Q then rational numbers can be split into two categories. We have the integers, which we represent with Z, or the non-integer rational, rationals, which would be the, the fractions and decimals that are not integers, I suppose. So like a half, three eighths, etc. Integers can be divided into two. We have whole numbers, that's zero, one, two, three, four, blah, 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 and negative integers, that'd be negative one, negative two, negative three, blah, blah, blah. And then the whole numbers can be classified either as counting numbers, or just plain old zero. Let's look at some examples to see how well you remember which letter stands for which subset of real numbers. So we want to determine whether each st statement is true or false. So what this is saying, this symbol here means is an element of. So it's asking is seven, is, is seven an element of, and then n, do you remember what n is? That's the natural numbers. So is seven a natural number? Yes, yes it is. So this would be a true statement. How about negative nine? This means is not an element of. So is negative nine not an element of Q? Do you remember what Q was? Q was the rational numbers. So it's saying ne negative nine is not rational. That's not true, negative nine is rational. This is a false statement. How about this one? 0 0.823831 is an element of Z. Z is the integers. So is that decimal an integer? No, no, it's not. That is not an integer. That is a false statement. And how about pi? Is pi an element of the real numbers? Remember R is real numbers? Yes, pi could be found on a number line somewhere between three and four. This would be a true statement. Something else we might be asked, asked to do is to determine all the sets or subsets of real numbers that each number belongs to. So we're only going to use the fancy no notation. We're not going to worry about things that don't have fancy notation. So we have our natural numbers. Oh, gross. Let's try again. We have the set of natural numbers. We have the integers. We have the rational numbers. And we have the real numbers. So we're going to just classify each one of these into one of these, well, well, to as many of these four that exist. So negative seven is not natural, but it is an integer. It is rational and it is a real number. So it gets three out of the four. 4.2, 4.2 is not natural. It's not an integer. It's rational and it's real. Eight pi is not an integer. It's not Sorry, it's not a natural number, it's not an integer, it's not rational, but it is a real number. Nine and three ninety-fourths is not a whole num a natural number. It's not an integer, 
It is rational though. So we can say it's rational. And of course it's a real number. Zero is not natural. It is an integer. It is a whole number, it's a whole number. It is a rational number, Q rational, and it is a real number. So these are the very famous subsets of real numbers.